Today, we're diving deep into the two stunning waterfall images from my previous video. I'll break down the composition, technical specs, and then take you behind the scenes as I bring one of them to life in print. I have this main one, which is my personal favorite, and then I also have the vertical form, vertical shot right here. So we have both of these pulled up. These are the two images that I came away with that I'm the most happy with. So for this one, what we'll do is we'll put this in full screen just so you can see it a little better. I've actually shot kind of up. I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. I've shot a close-ups of this waterfall itself before, but I've actually never backed up and, and been downstream. So what originally happened was I was too far back downstream um, in the first couple of shots as I was really far back. You got a lot of just rocks and there wasn't a whole lot of water. So you couldn't see the main subject real well. It just looked like a big pile of rocks and maybe some water. I made my way upstream to a point where I found this beautiful section right here, which is what, let me just start drawing on this. This section right here is what caught my eye. This cluster of rocks as well as a little dip down of the water um, that breaks right here. So when I saw this composition, my, the first thing that really caught my eye is the shape that it makes. So what happens is if you start your down here, you basically follow the water to the main subject, which is oftentimes what I try and do when I shoot waterfalls. I mean, sometimes we'll just follow the water to be honest is where does it spill off and where does it come from? And oftentimes that's a pretty good starting point at least. Sometimes it doesn't work out, but oftentimes it does. And in this case, it did. So I found this little dip off right here and I thought the spread of the water worked really nicely in the, in the foreground. It grabs your attention but it also drags you right up to the main waterfall. And all of these supporting elements, so say the moss on the rock here, the, I mean, this is summer foliage. I mean, this is about as green and as lust as it gets, and that's why I wanna check out Sweet Creek this time of year. I often will shoot it in the fall, and I'm definitely gonna go back and shoot it in the fall, but the summer, you get these vibrant greens that are just absolutely killer that I absolutely love. It's just such a nice contrast between the, the dark brown and black rocks with the white water and then just the stark greens. So I think all of the supporting elements work really well. The foreground is kind of what makes this image the image. It's just really engaging. It's something to grab your attention right away. This, you're just your eye locks onto it and then you just follow up to the beautiful main waterfall. So yeah, the, in this shot, that's kind of what I saw. As far as technical goes, I did shoot with the CPL, which is something I always shoot with. If I showed up to a location without a polarizer, I think I'd probably drive back no matter how, the distance. If I drove two hours to go shoot and I forgot my polarizer and there wasn't a sh camera shop local, I would definitely be driving back two hours <laughs> because it's super crucial, especially here in Oregon, is all of these reflections and all of the glare and stuff is completely cut. I mean, if I didn't have the polarizer on here, all these details and stuff in the rocks that are super wet would just turn into mush and it it just wouldn't work so the polarizer is it's what makes the technical side of this image it's also focus stack so i shot it at 16 millimeters so these elements were super close so i just did a, a simple three three image focus stack so i focused down here in one of them i focused in the mid ground and then i focused in the background blended it and stacked it in photoshop real quick it's a super easy process it takes no time so the extra i mean the extra two minutes or so on location even if you could probably get it in all in one stop if i focus all here and maybe f10 maybe f11 you would start to lose and this would get a little soft up here as well up here but you could of course make it work but i always take the extra two minutes to do it because it's just it's time wise it's super insignificant and it just adds so much sharpness and stuff especially in this case when i'm printing it which you'll really be able to see stuff like that so the polarizer focus stacked i'll pull up the put the settings on the screen here i don't know off the top of my head exactly what i shot this at but i'll put them up on the screen now um and yeah so the, this shot that kind of just breaks it down as far as composition goes I, these elements are what i saw like i said the main waterfall obviously which is this main subject just follows the water down to the bottom of the image where you could either start so your eye could start here and work your way down to that cool elements or your eye more likely than not is going to be caught down here and work your way up to the rest of the image so yeah so just a super engaging composition that i think works really well and i'm super happy with 
with this image and this is actually the one we're going to be printing so stick around towards the end of the video and we're going to be printing this thing which i'm super excited about so as far as the next one goes this is the second image so this is the vertical form here i'll put it in full screen again so this is the vertical image which i like i, I think it works really well as well but i do prefer the horizontal in this case I just think we kind of lose some important elements on the sides that i think the um, horizontal image showed kind of get the mosses a bit cut off right here um it just there was a few details down kind of over here and the horizontal image that i really liked so aside from that I, I do like the image i think it's i think it's a it's a very good image as far as composition goes and catches your eye as well and it follows the basically the same principle as the other image the other horizontal image you have the main subject here the water flows down and this is where your catches your eye whoa Jiminy Christmas. I don't know what that was, but I mean, it's basically, it's the exact same spot as the, I mean, I took this, the horizontal composition then I was like, well, I'm going to try vertical. So it's basically the same composition and just a vertical form. So you got the same kind of main eye attraction, which is this water flow here. And I like how it also, this splits here and then it splits around this rock. You have this rock, but then the water splits it, which adds a really nice kind of engaging foreground. And then it all, it just works its way up to the main falls. So your eye starts either here or here. My eye starts here and that, again i'm pointing at the screen my eye starts here and that's uh, when i shot it that's where my eye went so your eye starts here and then you follow up to the main falls you've got a super engaging foreground that sets the scene of a typical oregon waterfall it's got rugged rocks and moss and really nice details and things and the water streaks just add a really nice touch especially in the foreground the midground the, this waterfall dips off and then it just works its way up to the main fall here. Again, you have really nice supporting elements, the really stark greens, just like in the other image, the moss, the just the textures and the rocks. I love this atmosphere and this mood of this these shots. So yeah, the, the vertical is very similar in that sense. There's not a whole lot to dissect because it basically is the other image. It's just a, a different take, a vertical take. I don't really have a preference as far as vertical and horizontal. It's just a composition, just a, based on the composition. I do prefer printing horizontal images more than vertical. In, in some circumstances, I guess, it vice versa. But I try to make the horizontal images work first. And if they don't, then the vertical is usually usually where I go. So yeah, as far as the composition, that's kind of broke broken down. You got the main, whoa, you got the main subject here, the water flows down and then it spreads off and dips off. And this is the, the engaging foreground that sets the mood. As far as technical specs, again, I used a polarizer and that helps with all this glare and this glare and every single glare and all the details in the rocks. This image wouldn't be this image if it wasn't for the polarizer. So that was super important. And then I also focus stack this, as you can imagine. So I focus stack down here, the mid ground, and then the background. So this is just a three image focus stack. Again, took an extra 10, 15 seconds, but in this case, I definitely couldn't have got everything pin sharp in one exposure. There would have been no chance because if I focused here, then you'd it'd get really soft, obviously down towards here, and then it'd get soft up towards here. So for vertical images, as close as these rocks are, I 100% focus stack, color polarizer. Um, again, I'll put the, the specs up in this area somewhere as far as the composition that like breaks it down and um, these both these images have similar compositions but i think no i don't think i i know this image works better i i just prefer this image you just you get a lot more of this kind of drop off down here it just tells more of the story this this one feels like it is a bit cut off it's, i still really enjoy it but if i had to pick probably the horizontal in this case again i'm i'm saying that i know for a fact but i don't know i'm kind of indecisive <laughs> indecisive so the, the horizontal one's what we're printing so i hope i hope i end up liking this one better in print form if you have any questions just put them in the comment section and i'll i'll get back to you and and reply with with whatever uh whatever questions you have as far as maybe composition or any technical specs or anything like that yeah these two images came out very nice i'm super excited it's crazy enough that this is was my first landscape shoot of the year and we're in damn near september it's a little bittersweet i'm sure some of you maybe some of you guys know but i do shoot real estate full-time the landscape stuff this year i've been building the real estate business so landscape's been kind of been put on the back burner so i'm trying to trying to get that balance in life 
um, where I can do both of them and put focus on both of them. But again, it's it's tough when you're building one and then trying to build the other one at the exact same time. There's only so many hours in the day. So I, obviously landscape's gonna be in my heart forever and this YouTube channel, I'm still hoping that I could put out content consistently and share my processes and all that kind of stuff because landscapes are my true passion. This is, it doesn't get much better than this going out on a weekend and, and finding falls like this and shooting these kind of scenes. Um, as far as composition and stuff, these are done. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of show you my print process and how I would go about printing an image like this. So if we jump back into Lightroom here, I'll open up wherever it went. Um, I think it's this one, okay. So what I'll typically do is I'll create a virtual copy of the image. So for instance, I have made a virtual copy of this image right here. And the reason I do this is just so I don't mess with the original photo that that's done. This is the finished web-based photo. So I just create a virtual copy so I don't get it mixed up. Create a virtual copy and then I adjust a few things. So typically I'll enhance the, the brightness, maybe the highlights, all that kind of stuff, lift the shadows. It varies kind of by printer and what paper you're using, but I've printed enough on my printer that I can usually eyeball it to a certain degree. Obviously still test print. I always test print stuff. I'm, I'm getting pretty good as far as knowing my my equipment and stuff like that. I print on luster 90% of the time. So um, I already did a, actually already did a print sample of this one. I think I have it I have a, uh, right here. So I just printed a sample. I like how it turned out. I think that it could probably be, no, it doesn't need to be exposed any or exposure is pretty good. The highlights look pretty good. The shadows look pretty good. The color's great. No, oh, I think this, I honestly think the first shot or the first test might be pretty good. So we'll leave the settings. We'll leave the settings as they are on this one because I already created or I already did a test print and I'm happy with the results. So I used to print from Photoshop to professional print and layout by Canon, but all the plugin half the time doesn't work and I'm not really sure why. So I'm just going to go directly from Lightroom to what is it? Professional print and layout. So I'll go here, plug in extras, Canon professional print and layout. I print from this software because its colors are so accurate, it's incredible. I printed with Lightroom for the longest time and it was always such a pain to get the colors right. And this Canon software is just, I mean, it's beautiful. It works with my Pro 200, its color, and you set the profiles, ICC profiles and all that. And it's, I mean, it's pretty accurate. So yeah, I always bring it into here now. This is kind of my work, my newish workflow. And I'll set the paper so it's Pro Luster and then We'll go to, what do we wanna print on? Let's do, let's do A3 plus. So now we're gonna go basically fill slot with image. Well, I, I need to fit to paper size. I don't know why it's not a line. Here we go. Okay, so, oh, that's not even the right one. There we go. Okay, so now we're on the right one. There's, there's two different ones. There's a one with the margin and one without the margin. So A3 plus. And then what I'm gonna do is we got it centered. I don't know if I'm gonna, I kind of want to put a border on it to be honest, but I don't, no, let's print it borderless. Let's print it borderless. So in this case, I'm gonna print it borderless. I think it looks the best in this case. I don't need margins on it. Yeah, let's, we're gonna print it borderless on this one. So just gonna go through the settings really quick. Um, we got, Pro Luster, which is correct. Um, I print on Luster a lot. I do also have a Moab, um, kind of a fine art rag paper, which is brilliant. But for an image like this, I want as much vibrancy and blacks as possible. That will really kind of soften everything, which is really good for like woodland shoots and all that kind of stuff. So, but in this sense, we're gonna keep it with the Pro Luster. Um, we're gonna keep with the ICC profile. We want perceptual. And then we're gonna set print quality, obviously to high. Uh, there is some color setting, which I always leave it at four brightness. I don't know why it's been set at that and I've really liked it. So I'm going to keep it that way. And then, yeah, that's it. That's basically it. So, oh no, just kidding. I lied. We're going to get to the right um, profile for the paper. So I have these downloaded. You can download online, whatever paper you're using, you can download the profile for it. So I got the Pro 200 and then I have the Photo Paper Pro Luster. So Canon already has the profile set up. I just downloaded it, installed it. And now it'll be set up for that exact paper. Perceptual, A3 plus, borderless printing, photo paper pro luster, Canon Pro 200, and we're gonna leave it at custom. So this looks really good. 
I'm excited about this one. I'm excited about printing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and print it. I might shoot some B-roll while it's printing and stuff. And then, yeah, I'll show you guys what it looks like and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll kind of end it there. So I hope you guys have kind of enjoyed this maybe back end type things. I don't know if you're learning anything or, or what, but I just like showing my process because maybe it helps a few people. I was in that position at one point where I had no idea what this, what to do or um, how to do any of this stuff. So yeah, I hope this helps you and we'll get it sent to the printer now and we'll see what it looks like. And you can be the judge of if it, if it would have looked better with the vertical printed or the horizontal printed. So.